instead of providing new content, we only have about seven works left anyway, I'm going to give you some guidelines on how to tackle the 2020 AP exam essay questions. So I'm going to be splitting up this lecture into two parts just because I thought I would have time to do both today, but I ended up not. So we're going to start off with the comparison essay first. So the prompts that are used in this exercise have been slightly modified from existing AP exam questions to fit the parameters put forth by the College Board for the 2020 AP exam, which is different than the ones that have been provided in the past due to like coronavirus and all of the restrictions put in place for testing. So the questions that you actually receive on the exam might look different. We don't know yet because the College Board hasn't put out practice questions, which is fairly typical, even though it's only about two and a half or three weeks before the test actually starts. So based on the best of my knowledge, um, they'll look pretty similar to these questions. Knowing um, the College Board, they tend to like not change things pretty drastically when it comes to the formatting of the AP questions, unless they're completely changing the curriculum itself. So again, our first kind of question is the comparison question. To give you an overview of what the comparison question looks like, um, it'll be about 65% of your total score on the 2020 exam. It'll give you an image um, that is part of the 250 AP artworks, and it will also give you a couple of options for a second work to choose, and then you'll be comparing that first work that's provided with one of those like three or four works that's in a list. So it's basically asking you like how the artworks are similar and different and how they convey meaning and using specific and relevant evidence to explain the meaning or significance of these similarities and differences between the two works of art. So I know that this sounds pretty abstract and a lot of it's just kind of like words being thrown at you. That's totally fine. I'm going to be applying the specific language to the prompts that you might see in the exam. So I'm using this example right here. Um, I have altered the question slightly to show basically kind of the modifications that are being put forth um, for the 2020 AP exam. So in a lot of like original like kind of AP exam questions like this, they'll provide you like some information like the title or designation, the date, the culture of origin and, and all that stuff and materials. Um, but for these questions, they're not providing you with any of that. So I've basically modified the questions to take that out. Hopefully, though, you should all know that this is Augustus of Prima Porta. It's Imperial Roman, first century CE, marble, right? So the question is basically starts as, this statue's iconography, its images and symbols, communicates ideas or ideals of pow political power and authority in its original context. So that's basically how it would be phrased. Instead of saying, like, this is Augustus of Prima Porta, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, um, and it communicates ideas of political power and authority in its original context. So I know this is a lot of text. We're going to be breaking things down little by little. So I have provided a couple of slides that show you the prompt um, that we're going to be specifically looking at as well as the prompt format that I, ended, um, that I went over on um, two slides before, and I'm going to be connecting each part. So the first work is required and is a part of the image set. So there's no identifying information. So this is basically what it is. It's the image. There will be a second work selected by the student from Alyssa's suggested works from the required image set. No images are provided, so keep this in mind. Again, for this exam, it will be open book and open note, so you can just do a quick image search if you're like, I don't remember what that is. It's okay. There's that safeguard in place for you for this year only. So you can also select a different work of art from any content area to compare with that required work. So that actually includes artworks outside of units one through six. So you can reference something from Global Contemporary if you want to. As long as it's an AP artwork for the 2020 exam, then it, then it flies basically. So basically what this question is asking is like selecting completely identify another work depicting a ruler in which iconography communicates ideals of political power and authority. So you're finding another image of a some sort of like political um, figure. There's lots and lots of them in the AP curriculum, especially in the um, ancient Mediterranean unit. Our next part of the question is asking for specific visual evidence from both works. 
so that's the connection here. And specifically how, and the prompt format, it's described as how they convey meaning. You'll see like some sort of theme that's being indicated um, in these kinds of prompts. I'll be getting into that in a moment. The next part is to explain one difference in how the works are communicating this um, particular meaning. So now that we've figured out how each of the concepts covered in the comparison prompt might look in an actual essay you might receive on the exam, let's look at some other tools and techniques to address like each of these kinds of questions. So one thing that you'll notice is that there is this sort of theme to the comparison question. Sometimes it will be asking you about things like light. I remember giving you all a question for early Europe and colonial Americas asking you to talk about the concept of light in religious artwork. Um, in this case, it's ideals of political power and authority. So from class, you'll know that there's a couple of near universal and pretty recognizable concepts that are addressed within each of the themes that we've covered so far. Um, for example, like when you see an image of a political figure or an authority in art, like how do you know that they're a political figure and or authority? Like what about it indicates like this person is in charge? So that's something to immediately start thinking about when you see this um, kind of like phrase communicates ideals of political power and authority. And you see that phrase repeated over and over again in the question. Start thinking about like in the context of art history, how do we know that a figure is powerful or authoritative? So because these themes can be so all-encompassing, especially this one, it's helpful to focus on this concept as it's demonstrated in the works mentioned specifically in the prompt. Of course, again, you're free to use um, other works from the curriculum outside of these three mentioned, um, but for the purposes of this um, presentation, I'm just gonna stick to these three. So again, these images will not be provided on the exam. I'm just providing them here um, to take up some space on the presentation and to give you some examples of what these things look like so that when I talk about them, these things make sense. So the first part of the question says, describe the iconography of both this work and your selected work. So what's awesome is that they define iconography for you. So there's basically no excuses here. So all it's asking is what is the imagery and the kinds of symbols used in each work? So I really highly recommend being specific and going beyond the obvious. I cannot tell you how many essays I've received where a student will be like, the statue of George Washington shows the historical figure of George Washington. It's like, no, duh. Talk about what is he doing? What is he shown with? Like, what about this statue of George Washington is conveying some information about him? Be specific and explain, especially within the context of like imagery and symbols. Like we know that this is George Washington, but that doesn't tell us anything about imagery or symbols. Talk about the cane here, or the fact that he has this little protruding belly, or the fasces, these bundles of sticks, the sword. Like there's all these little clues that you can observe um, from the statue that are conveying specific elements about him. Same thing with Augusta Suprema Porta. Like, don't just say, it's Augusta Suprema Porta. Like, what is he doing? What is he wearing? Who's this random baby on a dolphin that's clinging to his leg? Like, tell me about it. The next part of the question asks about visual evidence. So this term should be a buzzword in your brain by now. You've used it several times. Visual evidence is stuff that you can perceive visually about an artwork. You don't need to know anything about an artwork whatsoever to tell me what you see. All you need to do is to have working vision. So tell me what's going on. Don't state the obvious. All of them show a powerful man. It's in the question. It's a political power and authority. Duh. So focus instead on what features shared by your artworks are communicating that the figures are powerful men. How do we know that they're powerful? If I were to use the George Washington and Augusta Suprema Porta example, I would talk about, for example, um, the use of this material, this white marble, um, and how 
it's communicating this kind of like monolithic figure this thing that is standing on its own it's not within the context of other figures and they're also in these kind of like contrapposto poses you could also talk about the ways that they're dressed um, they're very kind of like properly dressed you can talk about like the things that they're holding so what about them is talking about power that you can see visually So the next part of the question and the last part is asking you for a difference between the provided work and your selected work. So what you really need to make sure you're doing is to connect the concept back or connect the differences back to the concept of political power and authority. Or even like if you provide something that is technically true, it might not like be significant within the context of political power and authority. So for example, if I were comparing Augustus and this Ndop or portrait figure, yeah, Augustus is made out of marble and Ndop is made out of wood, but how does that convey anything about notions of power in these societies? So you need to be very specific um, and targeted with your identified difference because at first glance, there's gonna be a lot of differences between Augustus and the Ndop or portrait figure. They couldn't be more different, right? So you need to be specific about how they are different, okay? We also have this term contextual evidence that is popping up in the question. So you'll notice that it says use specific visual or contextual evidence about both this work and your selected work in your explanation. So you can do either or. You can stick with visual evidence if you want to, but you can also use contextual evidence. This is helpful if you happen to know stuff about these particular artworks. For example, like the specific context in which this statue was made or the specific context for, the stat for this statue right here. You can talk about how this statue, for example, was used to convey like the absolute power of the emperor in imperial Rome. Whereas the United States president was not necessarily a figure to have absolute godlike power. He's conveyed as very human here. He has a little bit of a pot belly. He has a cane because he's not in his physical prime anymore. Whereas Augustus here is like this Greek god-esque looking figure. He's very muscular. He's got this like very symmetrical youthful face. He's wearing this like soldier's armor but also has this um, these robes on to indicate that he has some sort of like intellect and knowledge. So that's an example of showing how contextual evidence is factoring into different interpretations of these pieces. So a couple of other tips, things that I recommend while you're answering this kind of question. I recommend checking off each part of the prompt as you answer it, just to make sure that you've covered all your bases. Um, the prompts on the AP test are similar to the ones you've received in my class on test days, but they're just jammed together into one big paragraph instead of separated into sections like I do. So you can basically turn it into a sectioned um, essay prompt by doing like A, B, C, D, E, and then checking them off as you go. Also, I know that I, in my class, it's totally fine for you to answer in bullet points for certain kinds of questions, but on the AP exam, you'll want to answer in complete sentences. And while you're answering in complete sentences too, you'll want to use language and syntax to indicate your ideas more explicitly, especially when you're answering a specific part of the prompt. So you'll want to be sure that you're describing a similarity. You can say one similarity between the two works is dot, 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 dot or one difference between the works is blah, 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 blah. What you can also do to save time, especially with the more cumbersomely named works, um, you can say, you can just write out the name of the work once, and then after it, put hereafter referred to as, and then some sort of abbreviation that is that makes sense to the reader. So Augustus of Prima Porta, for example, would just be A-O-P-P, -P, Augustus of Prima Porta. It makes sense. So this is a slide right here to indicate, again, like some of those differences between visual and contextual evidence, as well as some examples therein. Um, for your reference, you can actually keep a copy of this while you're taking the AP exam because it is open book and open note. I highly recommend that you have this open while you're doing this, just in case you totally blank on what's visual evidence, what's contextual evidence. So it's there for you. Here is another example of this sort of question if you would like to work through it yourself. 